So the Fed approved a 16% increase in aggregate capital uh, return levels for the banks in the recent stress tests. Uh, this means the banks now have an average dividend yield of 2.7% and a total cash back yield of 9% when buybacks are included. This is more than double the level of the broader S&P 500. It takes the cashback yield higher than pre-crisis levels and is roughly 6% higher than the yield on the 10-year Treasury note. The average boost in capital return was 16%. Wells Fargo topped the list in terms of increases with regionals like KeyCorp, SunTrust and Regions Financial close behind. Even Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, which only received conditional approval, managed to increase returns by 10% and 1% respectively. All of this uh, should act to support prices. However, banks have performed poorly in 2018 for two reasons, a flattening yield curve and significant outperformance in the prior 18 months. The other standout aspect of performance this year, particularly since April, has been small cap outperformance over large cap. As for the agenda for the rest of the year, first up is the shape of the yield curve. Second is earnings uh, starting next Friday, the 13th of July. And uh, third is miscellaneous questions like when will Lloyd Blank find hand over the reins to David Solomon at Goldman Sachs? Uh, bank stocks uh, this morning uh, in the pre-market, uh, which I think we've got coming up, uh, are alongside most of the, the rest of the market, uh, just a little bit low, but nothing too significant. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.